Hi, Peter Rose, Long Way Currency Trading. Just a quick video on presence of mind during your trading. Kind of an important concept for you to grab. So let's um, let's take a look at it and see what I'm talking about. Presence of mind. What's that all about? Well, it's the attitude that you sit down at the trading desk with when you get ready to start hitting the bid and ask. You have to have a, a trading mindset. You can't be thinking about the fact that your car is uh, up for service and you're going to run a $600 bill on that. You can't be worried about um, some project at work that you've got to do. You can't worry about anything. You can't worry about your toenails are hung and rotten out or or the dog didn't get fed, or you didn't win the Powerball, or whatever it is. Presence of mind means that you have to want to, want to trade. You have to be trading for the correct purpose. It's how you feel. You know, I don't get to feely touchy on this shit, but um, look, if you were gonna sit down and play poker, you'd know for sure you wouldn't wanna be having three or four drinks, or, or maybe if you do, you're stupid as a, as a rock. Um, but anything that we do that takes any sort of attention to detail or, or decision-making process, even of minimal importance, is going to require you to have a presence of mind for that particular activity. Um, you know, the videos that I've done deal with these aspects of trading that you don't find naturally in uh, books uh, puts people to sleep you're probably not going to watch this video anyway but if you do that's a smart thing because i kind of know what i'm talking about your attitude is everything you know i've been in martial arts for 50 years and attitude is very very important to that if you have a victim complex when you're walking down the street People are going to pick on you. Even if you're in the classroom as a student and you have a, uh, a sense of inadequacy, kids are going to pick on you. I know that for a fact. That's how I grew up in my whole life. I was more of a bookworm type kid than a, than a sports-minded person. I never got together with kids to do the stuff that kids did. I was in my room reading and learning how to use a slide rule and and uh, talking to engineers that my dad knew and that sort of stuff. So um, I, was, I was picked on and I, because I didn't have the correct presence of mind. If you're going to sit down and trade and risk your money, whether that's $1,000 or $100,000, doesn't make any difference. You better be sharp. You better be on point with your attitude as to why you're there and what you're trying to accomplish. And you cannot have more of a fear of loss than you have a want for gain. My martial arts master, uh, Sam Brock, taught me that back in, oh, I don't know, 1969 or something like that. As human beings, we have more of a fear of loss than we have a want for gain. We gotta flip that around. You know, uh, I did a, a video not long ago about the, um, reward to risk ratio and how most people misinterpret that as being risk to reward and all the crap that goes and that's involved in that. There's so much emphasis in the um, educational literature and videos and stuff on risk to, re uh, to reward, uh, highlighting on that risk part. That's why they call it risk to reward because they want to be sure that you, because you're stupid, you want to be sure that we're talking about risk here. We're not. We're talking about reward to risk. That's what we want to know. I've got two times my reward to the risk that I take. I don't want to say I have 0.5 uh, times my risk to the reward. I'm like, well, that doesn't make any sense. You don't look at the risk. You look at the reward. And if the reward potential is there, you look at the risk, you mitigate it, and then you charge after that reward. You don't quake in fear, dangling your toes over the side of the pool because the water is deep. You know, you've learned how to swim. You jump in the water. They don't make boats to stay in the harbor. I use that analogy all the time. And I do that because I used to be a small boat penguin class sailor on Lake Michigan. And uh, yeah, we stayed in the break 
in, inside the breakwater um, there by Buckingham Fountain uh, quite a bit because uh, you take a little 12 and a half foot sailboat outside the breakwater and you're in deep shit, man. You better know what the hell you're doing. Besides, that water's cold. Um, so, you, but we, you mitigate the risk. If you're going to go outside that breakwater, you mitigate the risk. You have your life jackets on. You got, you got everything stowed away uh, good. You got your stays uh, set at the correct tension to keep the mast from snapping if the wind comes up on you. All these things. And then you enjoy the sail. You get out there and you crash through the waves and you get your face wet and, and you just have a great time and then you come in after the, after the experience and you, and then you got, you got shit to talk. You know what I'm saying? You, you, then then you, you got stuff to talk about. But if all you're doing is quaking down on the, on the, floor, of the, uh, on the floor of the boat or, or wringing your hands over the risk that you took or, uh, or the loss that you took because uh, the risk was too great in, reward, in respect to the reward, you, you, that isn't where you want to be as a trader. That's not the correct presence of mind. Got to have the correct presence of mind in order to be an effective human being, let alone trader. Peter Rose, Longwood Currency Trading. Have a great day. Have a great trading day.